Please be seated. I remembered to turn off my phone, a good thing. And then my watch said just a moment ago, I didn't catch that, would you repeat that? So from the nine o'clock service to the 11 o'clock service, I'll repeat that. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 13. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow until, together until the harvest. At the harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciples approached him saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds and the field, of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where they will be weep there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit. Move our heads with your word. Move our hearts with your spirit and move our souls with the words of Jesus. Amen. If you want to raise my anger and make my blood boil, it's not hard. All you have to do is let me see another report of a government whitewashing our history. We've all seen the reports don't say gay, banning of books, college professors told what they can't teach. Oh, we don't want to offend anyone. We don't want to hurt anyone's feelings with telling the truth. Perhaps you get a little angry too. I have a three-year-old granddaughter who on some days, is fascinated with her belly button. She has a voracious appetite for food. Sometimes her belly button isn't any. After she eats, sometimes her belly button is an Audi. If you think this sermon title is about any and Audi's belly buttons, it's not. Today's Gospel reading is the second of seven parables about the Kingdom of Heaven. Last week's reading 
Jesus was speaking to an audience that was in an agrarian society. And this continues that conversation. The people have heard about seeds planted in good soil, that is, faithful followers of Jesus, ones who exemplify the rule of God on earth as it is in heaven. Matthew's Gospel is speaking to a primarily Jewish audience, so he doesn't use the name of God when teaching about the kingdom of God. Instead, Matthew writes about the kingdom of heaven. Some might call the author of Matthew politically correct, or sensitive, or woke. Jesus said the kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in a field. While everyone was asleep, the enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat. The enemy doesn't stick around. The weeds and the wheat grow up together with the wheat producing grain. The servants questioned their master, asking, did you not sow good seed in this field? The master says, the enemy has done this. The slaves offer to uproot the weeds. The master stops them saying, they will uproot the wheat with the weeds. Let them grow together until the harvest. The master continues, at the harvest, the reapers will collect the weeds and bundle them to be burned. Jesus says, the wheat will be put into my barn. The point of this story is with the cliche that is true. We take the Bible seriously, but not literally. This parable of Jesus directs us to the reality of God's reign. God's reign is a mystery that has been hidden in plain sight since the foundation of the world. Jesus is speaking in parables, storytelling, to change the minds of his followers. Jesus leaves the people on the beach and they return to their homes. Jesus and his disciples go into a house. In this house, the disciples want Jesus to explain the parable of the wheat and weeds. Bluntly put, the disciples are slow to understand what Jesus was saying. I can almost hear Jesus saying, listen up, boys and girls. The one who sows the seed is the Son of Man, which was Jesus' favorite title for himself. Jesus continues saying, the field represents the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one. The enemy who sowed the weeds is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age. The reapers are the angels. The weeds find their doom with fire, weeping and gnashing of teeth. The righteous will shine in the kingdom of their father. Finally, Jesus says, let anyone with ears listen. After I read this parable of Jesus, I come with several takeaways. First is complacency. The Southern Poverty Law Center has named Moms for Liberty an extreme group because they work to infiltrate local school boards with their bigotry by banning books and trying to shape curriculum. The Southern Poverty Law Center writes, Moms for Liberty is an anti-student inclusion group that presents itself as a modern parents' right organization that seeks to unify, educate, and empower parents to defend and protect their parental rights at every level of government. That sounds appealing to many parents. However, social media accounts and real-world activity of the national organization and its chapters are anti-government, 
conspiracy propagandists, anti-LGBTQ+, anti-gender identity, and anti-inclusive curriculum. Our complacency is much like the workers sleeping. While the workers slept, the field was sown with weeds. Complacently, complacency has allowed this to happen. In our lives, the weeds are there, so they will grow with us in our lives. The second takeaway is struggle. The weeds, the weed common to wheat fields is something called the bearded darnel. In its early stages, this weed is similar to wheat, but later it is known as a cheat weed, nothing like the grain produced by the wheat. It's a wolf in sheep's clothing. It is, in this parable, the acknowledgement that evil exists. That evil is wanting to vine its way into our minds, our hearts, and our souls. Weeds are found with the middle manager who is glad for the company's big profits, but she's not sure about the bookkeeping behind those numbers. It's a school board saying things have to be taught a particular way, stifling a teacher's creativity with his students. It's a lawyer asking to turn his head away from a questionable situation for the good of the firm. My grandson's soccer team plays Sunday mornings during this worship service time. My six-year-old grandson gets it. He said to me, Papa, you're never going to get to church. <laughs> Following Jesus is a struggle. The first takeaway is complacency. The second takeaway is struggle. And the third takeaway is eschatology. Eschatology is a theological term you need not fear. Eschatology simply means the study of last things. I'll circle back to that in a moment. We live in a deeply divided country. Racism, sexism, misogyny, and divisive politics are the weeds that grow up right next to those who desire to be the true wheat yielding grain. It's not only in our workplaces, it's in the wider church. In recent days, the Southern Baptist denomination moved toward having male-only clergy in that denomination. I would suggest they read the Christian scriptures more closely and see the contributions of women, or just come and hear the Reverend Joanna, Joanna Samuelson preach. The United Methodist Church is anything but united. They are slowly splitting over the LGBTQ plus issues. I suggest they look at the loving kindness and faith, fruitfulness of this community and how Jesus welcomed all. Sometimes these divisions are caused by people or groups not wanting to be contaminated by the touch of someone or some other group different from them. Sometimes it is countries or religious groups that want to be pure and not like the infidels. Sometimes it is a power struggle, keeping the power and making sure the other does not get their power. Jesus tells us not to uproot the wheat with the weeds. Think of modern world history. Nothing good comes from this weeding. Jesus is right. Hitler and the Nazis tried to weed the garden of all sorts of God's people they deemed undesirable. It didn't work. 
Senator Joe McCarthy tried to root out those he considered to be pinkos or communist sympathizers. It didn't work. The Ku Klux Klan tried to weed out their undesirables called Jews, Roman Catholics, and people of color. It didn't work. In Bosnia, there was ethnic cleansing, and in Africa, there were tribal wars, and everyone was hurt because it doesn't work. There have been vigilante groups and militias claiming they were going to do what the government didn't do to get rid of undesirables. When will they learn? It does not work. In the predecessor denominations and now in the United Church of Christ, we have often been on the right side of history. I'm thinking of the abolitionists that started this church and so many other congregations. I'm thinking about those who nonviolently fought for civil rights. I'm thinking about our denomination stand on marriage equality. I'm also thinking about those ready to vote no on issue one on August 8th. This is where we must be careful. If we are not careful, we can become just like those people. I mean the weeds. This is when we think what we do is right in deciding who is in and who is out. This is where eschatology comes into play. When we think we can decide who is in and who is out, Jesus teaches us not to bother with uprooting the weeds. Instead, let them grow until the wheat bears the fruit of the grain. In time, it will become obvious which are the weeds and which are the wheat bearing fruit. Finally, in the end, the angels will sort out the weeds from the wheat for God, not us. If, in the end, God is the judge, well, guess what? We are not. And what are we to make of this parable? It looks like a book without the last chapter. We vaguely know how it will end, but we are not completely sure. Our calling is to be the faithful wheat. Our God tolerates good and evil, faith and faithlessness, and in God's good timing, God will be the God who will judge and redeem. Amen.